My game of the day from round five of the Sharjah Masters is Valery Neverov against Sandro Mareko. So Neverov, <clears throat> Ukrainian grandmaster, rated 2477. Uh, Mareko is Argentinian, rated 2664. So almost 200 points difference. But Neverov is very experienced. So, you know, I, I wouldn't say there's such a gulf in class between the two players. Okay, without further ado, e4 from Neverov. And he plays a close Sicilian. e6. Well, black's second move in this position, whether it's e6, d6, or, or knight c6, really depends on what Sicilian you play with black because you always have to be aware that white can return to an open Sicilian with either knight f3 or knight e2 and d4. g3, but Neverov keeps it keeps it closed. And the system that uh, Mariko employs here I think is, is noteworthy. Um, he plays a very flexible system. You notice he hasn't moved his d-pawn yet. Now it might stay on d7, could go to d6, could advance to d5. He's waiting first to see how white plays before committing himself. So, for example, after knight e2, you don't necessarily have to play d5. It's possible. But in that case, white can take and now either play d4 or you can play knight f4 in that position and put a knight on d5. Um, after knight e2, you can just wait with bishop e7, for example. But Neverov played f4, the, the typical close Sicilian move. And, and in my experience, many close Sicilian players just want to play the first 10 moves without looking at the board and, and without looking at you know what their opponent is up to. Now after f4, it's the time to get in d5, so black counters in the middle. And if white plays d3, then of course black could trade and simply exchange queens and go into an endgame. So white closes, and now we have a structure which is more, more akin to a French defence. Except that white doesn't have such good control of the centre because there's no pawn on d4 to support e5. And, and that makes it more difficult for white to advance on the king side. So both sides castle and d3. Now when I was looking at this game uh, on my database, I saw that there was actually a game played between Nimzovich and Alikin from 1926. Um, that was a bit of a surprise. Um, and Alikin played in a very aggressive way. First of all, knight b6. d4, maybe to put the knight on d5 to look at this uh, weak square on e3. And after g4, he broke with f6. Now, this is a really double-edged position, obviously, because black has compromised his own king position, but he has broken down white's control in the center. In fact, uh, Alikin reached a winning position. Very complicated game, but um, he messed up and Nimzovic actually won. But it's an interesting to see how Alikin tackled the position. But Mareko plays in... Well, more typical style, more familiar style, at least to me, um, advancing the queenside pawns. And here is um, here's a difficult moment for white. You have to decide whether or not to play a4 or not. Do you just ignore what black's doing on the queen side? So I have to say that the kind of classical way is not to touch the side where you're being attacked just to ignore it and you know I just wonder whether g4 might be a better way of doing things so the idea of g4 is actually to create a square for the knight on g3 like this so you can see <clears throat> excuse me the the queen side remains closed at the moment 
Um, but black is probably going to play moves like a5, and you know maybe bishop a6 and c4 or a5, a4. You know maybe a3. I mean it's some. It's a it's a little bit like a king's Indian attack. I mean it's just a very double-edged position. But Niverov plays a4, and we'll see that this kind of rebounds. You know, you could say that after b5, well, white is is getting the a-file for the rook, but in fact, well, black is able to use it. So knight e2. And now white plays c3. I mean, it's possible that black later on will, will employ the, the Alikin plan of playing d4 and knight b6 to d5. So... You know, maybe he wanted to kind of forestall that with with c3. Um, but again, it, it sort of allows black to to make contact. Curiously, Mareko has had this position before and played b4, and then he put his bishop on a6, and he won the game. That certainly doesn't look bad. But he went for a different plan. He played knight b6. And he said after the game he wanted to make use of the fact that the bishop was still on c8 to slow down any potential play that white has on the king side. So white is basically gunning for f5, but with the bishop on c8 it makes it far more difficult to actually get this break in. d4. And now b4, so you can see, you know, all the play at the moment is is centered on the queen side. And bishop d7, simple move. The idea is to connect the rooks on the back rank, and challenge and get counterplay. There we go. So that, that's what I mean when I say that the open a file actually can be used by black. And at the moment, f5 just isn't happening because the bishop sits there. And now, well, obviously, you know, white is, is trying to sort of maintain the rook on, on the a-file. But in playing the bishop round to g1, I have to say that this is not going to help any potential white attack. You know, you really want the bishop on this diagonal. Um, so that after... Uh, possible f5 you know it can it can perhaps do something on like that diagonal but on g1 it's really not going anywhere and i feel that things have just worked out really well for black uh you could play knight e takes d4 i mean possibly that's better than the game continuation then black plays queen c7 and i i definitely prefer black here beautiful knight on c4 Potentially, this pawn is weak. But at least this knight is not a bad piece. And the bishop actually has is reasonably placed now. The problem is in the game, after c takes d4, that the bishop isn't really doing anything at all. Now, I understand why white wanted to do this, to protect e5 and perhaps to get in f5 later because the e-pawn is, is defended. Nevertheless... This looks like a lot of fun for black. So black's piece is just kind of crawling in on the queen side. So bishop b5. And this is already very nasty indeed. So a threat to play knight b2. And and it's it's hard to, to actually defend against this successfully. You know, you don't really want to play a move like uh, rook f2 blocking the bishop. That looks absolutely horrible. So white went for it with f5 and just gave up the exchange so obviously that opens up this diagonal queen moves it's it's hit bishop takes rook and now the knight came into d3 so you can see black's pieces are just kind of crawling into the position and although there is some potential for these pieces on, on the king's side. It's very hard to see how they can be used if if files aren't open. 
I think the critical thing here is can white bring the queen over to the king's side? So, for example, queen c2. And let's say a, rook a3. <clears throat> you know, you might want to play queen a5 and rook a1, or and sometimes the rook is very good on that third rank. Um, f6, let's try this. Queen d2. Let's try and swing the queen over, but actually, you know, there's there's not a lot going on here. You know, black can defend this. Or knight h5. You can just play g6 actually. Um because f6 is covered and, and if this, well again you know, black, I think it is is all right here. Um, this queen can match white's queen. But queen c2 would have been more dangerous than the game continuation, which was knight e1. And I think after this trade, then it really does look miserable uh, for white. Just an exchange down and there's no real prospect of an attack on the king's side. Neverov exchanged and played queen b7. I mean, he's trying to get something on the on the light squares. And here, actually, after rook f1, Mareko makes a little bit of a blunder. Um, he played queen c8, which allows a tactic. I mean, he should just trade rooks here and play rook b8 and just drive the queen away. I mean, this is obviously winning for black. Instead, he played queen c8, which allows this tactic if pawn takes, then suddenly white is back in the game, as, as the, the queen is looking at all these pieces. But after bishop takes, in fact, black should trade queens. And it should be winning still. I mean, white has got a pawn for the exchange now, but, you know, this rook is so wonderful, um, and, and the king is so bad that it must be winning for black. But after queen c8, instead, the white queen ducked back. And now that didn't really, well, <laughs> didn't really help because after, after rook c1, in fact, the knight came back. But it, it doesn't spoil anything at all. I think there was a certain amount of time pressure involved here. I mean, white, white is still the exchange down and, and can't improve his position in any way, actually. And queen a8, really simple, so the rook is now just coming down to the first rank. And white's king is about to suffer. So a horrible pin here. And black took a pawn. And white decided that enough was enough. He resigned here, yep, yeah, which is entirely fair enough. So a smooth victory of course during the game it never feels smooth but it looks like a very nice system to me to play with d5 um, because white just doesn't have that central control there and Mareko said afterwards that basically he felt that this kind of position with the bishop still on c8 is a favorable version of another line of the close Sicilian which goes a6 and the point of that move is to prevent white playing a kind of grand prix so stopping the bishop going to b5 or or c4 later on and this system is related to the one we've just been looking at but generally i mean this is typical continuation but you can see that the bishop is, bishop is on b7 not c8 and obviously blocks the b file as well so it's this is a slightly worse version for black whereas in the game if we get to that position it actually does make a difference that the bishop is still on it c8 because it stopped or help to prevent White's kingside counterplay. I hope that makes sense. Um, 
That, that win brings Sandro Moreco to four out of five, and he's just half a point behind the leaders on... There are six players on four and a half.